Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to the stream. Thanks very much for joining. My name is Tim from Signage Live. You're here with Digital Signage Explored. It was meant to be me and Joe, but he's unfortunately away on holiday. These things happen, but I've got a really uh, good show I want to take you through today. I've spent a bit of time actually going through a full content structure just to make sure that we can discuss from top to bottom exactly how you can structure your content to A, make the most out of it, B, reduce the amount of time you have to spend on it, and C, just make sure that you're utilizing as many of the tools available in Digital Signage now to make that content really pop. I've spent some time and I'll walk you through the whole workflow of this. This will be an audio podcast as well as video video later on down the line, so I'll try and be as verbose as possible when explaining things. If you do have any questions on this or any thoughts or feedback, do add them in the chat. You can see the live chat is running here. I'm more than happy to discuss that uh, in more detail. And I'm also managing my own comments and things today, so bear with me as I check the, the chat and the feed as we go through today. There we go. Cool. Okay, let's begin. So if I head over to my desktop view here, this is what I've put together for you. So in essence, what I've done is built out an entire structure as if I was a company looking for internal communications for the first time. And what we're going to do today is walk through from the very top right down to the bottom how we should formulate that content, where we should get the content requests from, and how we should understand how that process and workflow works step by step. So if you're new to digital signage or if you've been tasked with going to build out a content workflow plan, steal this and use this because it is pretty much everything you'll need to make it as easy as possible for you with some of the thoughts and feedback. This is specifically around a corporate scenario, but if you do have any questions, do let me know. So I do have chat open. So if you've got any questions or anything as we go through this, do let me know. Okay, so let's start from the top of the list here. Most likely, one of these requests typically comes from either someone in marketing or an exec level decision maker, someone that says we need to improve communication or we need to facilitate faster information being delivered to people. And that's where the inception of this conversation typically starts. It's around how do we get the, the communication or all of the mass amount of information we need to get out to our staff, our employees, or even those visiting. This tends to start from either the marketing or the exec team. doesn't necessarily have to, can sometimes come from an IT team perspective, but this is typically what we see. So that's where the project starts. So someone, most probably yourself, will be tasked now to go and find out what content do we need, where do we need screens, who are we influencing, and how are we influencing them. So as we go down then, the next step of this is going to your departments. So before you do anything, let me just zoom out here, you need to understand who your audience is. So you may have one of these, you may have all of these, or you may have just a few of them. Warehousing, logistics, that's typically a really good department to go and talk to. That's where there's gonna be real value and add, added to them from a communications perspective. IT and administration, you've got the sales departments, you've got marketing departments, human resources, and the executive team. And you might have some other ones on top of that as well. But typically, these are who we're facilitating conversations with to make sure that they're getting the communications that they need from their digital signage. So let's just take this imaginary company that we've built now. You've been tasked, you've gone, you've put a list together of all the departments that we need to go and speak to, and this is the outcome. So from warehouse and logistics, let me zoom in here. From warehouse and logistics, they are asking to display metrics and they want information about the output of the logistics warehouse. They want to understand if they're keeping up with demand, if they're making sure that they're getting things out the door quick enough, if the product is coming out of high enough quality, if there are any issues. They also want to receive company news, so just be kept up to date. They're also looking at emergency messaging. So if there was an emergency, a fire or an incident or an injury, how can they communicate that better? Then we go over to our IT and admin. So... We go and speak to them, and what do they come back to us with? Well, they want to display outstanding tickets. They want to understand what tickets have not been closed in a timely manner. They want to understand how they can put that in the front of their IT teams to make sure that they're facilitating those tickets getting completed as soon as possible. They also want to display security news, incidents, what could be important to them at the time when it comes to making decisions about platforms that they're running. They just want to be kept in the know about security incidents within the company so they can keep that a top priority. Then we go over to the sales team. Um, what are they looking for? They're looking for displaying latest sales metrics. So they want to show dashboards of those sales informations right in front of them. So A, they can be motivated, it can be gamified, and they can keep track of what they're trying to get to, which is hitting their targets, hitting their bonus, and getting those metrics over the line. Training is one that comes up as well. How do we, from a sales management perspective, keep training and onboarding at, at kind of the forefront of the mentality, brand guidelines, how do we talk to our customers, what is our language, all of these things could be uh, a request that comes through from that sales department. 
The other piece on there is company news, and you'll see that go through. So a lot of these departments will say, well, we just want to be kept up to date with company information. The other one is marketing, so something that I'm particularly familiar with. They want to display social media feeds, so they want to see the feeds that they're posting, but they might also want to see competitive feeds. They might want to see feeds from partners or relationships that they're ongoing with. They want to have a range of different social feeds that they're displaying at all times. Analytics and metrics, how are their marketing CTAs working? How is their SEO going? How is their Google reports going? They want to make sure that that's being traced too. Being able to communicate new marketing collateral outwardly externally so they want to be able to give those resources to the sales team so they can utilize it best and then again receive company news finally human resources is the next one so they're predominantly want to promote new hires so that's the channel outwards they want to tell everyone hey this new person started they want to do internal promotions they want to kind of let people know what's going on within the company updating stuff on policies within the business as well so just making sure that they're keeping that streamline of communication outwards also and then finally from the executive team they might want to look at things like company ethos, showing leadership through the digital signage, making sure that they have that tangible touch time with all of their employees and to connect with those employees. So you might experience this slightly differently. There might be different requests come through, but we're starting to build this pipe of content that we need to deliver. Now, you might be thinking at this point, whilst you're looking at this, this is a lot of work already. You know, we're talking about lots of different channels, lots of different content. Don't worry, as we go through this, we'll start to alleviate some of that and look at ways to do this in a smart way. So as we go down, we then see what is our content. So just to summarize, displaying warehouse logistics, company news, emergency messaging, outstanding IT tickets, security news, sales metrics, training, social media, tracking analytics, com uh, new collateral communication, promotion of new hires and internal promotions, updating staff on policies, promoting the company ethos, showing leadership and connecting with employees. That is not a small list of content that may potentially come through when you start this journey of understanding what your digital signage content is going to look like. And at this point, you might start to wonder if you have the bandwidth or the capability to do that with the resources that you have internally. This is where we can start to look at how we can alleviate this, how we can dissect this information to make the most sense possible whilst delivering all of this information and not over utilizing our bandwidth so you don't have multiple individuals having to manage this on a daily basis. So let's scroll down a little bit. What we can first do is, is start to look at how we can dissect this content. And there's three pieces of content that we can dissect this into. One is automated. What can we automate completely where actually once the initial configuration has been set up, it just goes, it will update itself, all of this information. The other one is manual or sporadic. And that's you're typically, hey, I've got an event coming up. Can we do a promotion about it on this thing? Can we let people know? And then finally, you've got once. So if training isn't going to change very often, maybe it's every couple of years or every year, whatever it might be, or you want to have a fire emergency button and you want to have uh, signs that point you to the nearest fire exit, that's content that's typically just going to change once and it's not going to change on a regular basis. And if it does, it's more just a visual update than it is anything that's definitively important. So now that we've split those into three, if we take away the automated and we take away the once as our body of work for initial configuration, we're actually just left with the manual and sporadic. So that's IT ticket information, which I'll touch on a little bit later as well. Security news, com communicating new collateral, promoting new hires and internal promotions, updating stuff on policies, leadership and thought leadership and connecting with employees. So now all of a sudden this body of work starts to become far more uh, digestible. So if we go down then, the next step is to look at these channels. So you might, and as we go through this, you'll see that some of these things have been mentioned in multiple departments. Everybody wants to know about company news. So company news in itself can just be its own channel because we're going to be reutilizing this. And when we look at a CMS, a channel we just consider is like a playlist in essence. It doesn't mean it's just one piece of content. It's just a playlist of content just like... If you just go on to BBC One or BBC Two, they'll have a list of shows going throughout the day. In the same way, a playlist will just be your channel of content. And then you'll have multiple assets, images, videos, whatever it might be running in there. So I've broken down all of those pieces. And what you'll need to do at this point is say, OK, where do I see similarities in requests and where can I make uh, where can I reduce down the amount of channels that I need to manage? So as an example, Emergency messaging is always going to be its own channel because we can't really have emergency messaging and social media sitting in the same place. It just won't make sense. So we can start to look at data. Well, actually, the warehouse and logistics output, the latest sales metrics, analytics and metrics, 
all of those are data. Why don't we put them into its own channel? So when we go to set this up, we just have one channel. It's called our data channel. If a department wants to receive the data channel, they can receive it. And I'll talk a little bit more about tagging later on. But at the moment, you might say, well, actually, what if the sales want the data channel, but they don't want the warehouse and logistics? And you can tag that individually. So basically, microing down to the granular level what content someone does or does not want to see. Emergency messaging, there's a training channel that's dedicated. And again, just a bit of an aside, that training channel, let's say, for example, if you have a either a web trigger or a system on chip screen, which would be a screen with everything in, built into itself, you'd actually be able to utilize that training video on a whim. Being able to hit a button on a remote or being able to tap a button on an iPad could then launch that training. I'm not going to talk about that in too much detail today, but maybe that's something Joe can pick up on in the next episode. So you've got your training channel, social media feeds, again, multiple different feeds, company news, ticket information, security news, new collateral. But you'll notice, for example, with the exec feed, we've got multiple things all put into that one feed. So all of those requests, actually that can sit on its own executive feed and that we can allow the users to manage that on their own. So we've boiled it down, we've expanded and reduced, we've expanded out to say, here's all the individual assets, here's all the individual channels that we need to manage. And when we boil this down to what's automated and what's not automated and what's manual, how do we deliver that information to those screens? Let's just say, for example, in this case, you've got 100 screens across the business. Just throwing a number out there, it could be 10, 15, 20, 2,000. It doesn't really matter. But if we just take a round number as 100, you might say that 10 of these screens, each channel goes to 10 of these screens dependent. And one screen might have multiple channels as well. So then we look at channels to departments. So what we've what we've dissected from this is there's must have content and there's requirement by department content so every screen within the business is going to receive the executive feed by executive request because the execs want to be able to have this broad brush strokes of being able to communicate with everybody in the business and make sure everybody's aligned the hr feed is a non-negotiable feed as well people need to know about new promotions new hires new policies that need to be put into the business Security feed, the IT team have mandated that's vital for them to let people know of any security incidences. Social media feed is something that was decided from a brand awareness and kind of unifying the company. We're going to keep that and the company news feed as well. So now we've really boiled down the content that we need to manage. So all of this, the must have content is just going to be one channel for each one managed by an individual or potentially an individual who's managing all of them. And they're just updating the playlist and that playlist knows which players it needs to go to, which in that example is all of them. Then you go down to the more unique content. So warehouse and logistics receives the data channel because they want that warehouse information and they receive the emergency messaging channel, which will be built into triggers later on from a web trigger perspective. IT want a data channel. In fact, IT sales and marketing and warehouse all want data, but human resources aren't too worried about the data in that case, and they're not going to receive that channel. Actually saying that the exec team have data as well, because that's really, really important. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Then you've got the warehouse and logistics have the emergency messaging. IT have their security news that they want to receive and their ticket information. And as you can see, it's just rejigging everything that we've talked about and putting it into the correct paths. So now very quickly from your content perspective, you're going to be able to build this much easier. Now, going down, I've got an example here of a, a layout. So as you can see, some of these departments are requiring way more content than others. So you might find that it's easy for you to say, well, the marketing team, we're just going to have a full screen playback. The screen is going to display everything one at a time, full screen for a moment. You're going to have 30 seconds of social media. Then you're going to have 30 seconds of your company updates. You can have 30 seconds of HR information, for example. When you get to warehouse and logistics and they want to display their data, well, it's not very useful for them if their data vanishes every four minutes and is gone for a period of time because they want to be able to access that content at all times. And that's where you can start using your layouts. So now that you have all of these channels, you kind of have carte blanche for them to say, actually, we desperately need to display this channel all the time. Can we have that permanently on the screen whilst either utilizing another screen or in this case, a zone to display the rest of the content. 
And that's where the answer is yes. You can go and build that out. You can go and say, actually, I want to have on my left-hand side, I'm going to have my logistics information permanently there because it's key metrics and data. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to have my HR information. I'm going to have my company news. So hopefully this is starting to come together as this very easy way to manipulate the content that makes your life much easier in terms of building that content. So let's go down a little bit further to content responsibilities. So again, you may do this one of two ways. You may have an individual or a department that's responsible for all of the content. That isn't normally always the case because what you'll find is there's unique instances where IT say, well, we want to be able to upload our own support tickets. We want to be able to upload our own security news information. We don't want a bottleneck of having to go and request that and then waiting for that to be kind of accepted, built and then changed. What you can do at that point is start to build out a local user, an individual that can access a channel or part of a channel and manage that on their own. And there you start to very quickly see that it's everybody's responsibility to look after that digital signage, but it's only a small task once a week or whenever an instance comes up or whatever the regularity might be, they can start to look after that as well. So in this case, the way that I've built this out is the decision was that marketing is going to take care of most of it. Some of this is one-offs like emergency messaging. They're just going to make the collateral to make that happen on the screen. They're going to make the training videos. They're going to prep the social media. Bearing in mind, that's an automated channel too. Company news is on marketing communicating new collateral, HR feeds, and the exec feed as well. They're going to receive that information from the executive team. They're just going to kind of deliver what they need to show. Then you've got your IT admin. Again, as I say, they're kind of looking after just the security news. And I've put data there because what we'll kind of go into in a little bit is as a data source, you can go and pull things like Power BI, a SharePoint, Tableau, Trello, a whole range of different products, but IT and admin are most likely going to be responsible for keeping that connection live and just being responsible for the API because typically, obviously, from a security perspective, they're going to be looking after that. So although they are responsible for the data feeds, it's more on the initial configuration. Once that initial configuration is done, it's automated content. So IT admin's responsibility, but not actually any additional workload for them unless something was to go wrong or a disconnect happens or something like that, but it's very unlikely. Okay, so that's that. So now we've got our teams that are responsible for the content. We know what content channels we need to build. We know what content we've been requested. We know what individuals need to look after what pieces of content. And we know where that content's going to go on what screens in what configuration. At this point, you're pretty close to done. You've figured out where that content needs to be deployed and who's responsible for it. And obviously, I would recommend having a sit-down conversation or a roundtable with all of these departments to make sure that they're aware of where those responsibilities lie. So as I mentioned, there is more data automation. So here's a screenshot of a data automation. This is a Trello widget, a SharePoint widget, a SharePoint news template, and two Power BI apps all running in one playlist or what I've kind of deemed them in this case is channels. And they're running for a period of time. They're all connected to their own important data source. So that's sales metrics or it's IT information, IT tickets, a Trello for IT uh, issues. They're all set up in one channel. The additional thing you can do to make life easier for you is then to tag those. So I can send the data channel to all of the screens in the business and then say, actually only display this number one asset here if it is in, if that screen has, has received that is in the sales room and then it will tag that asset with sales. Likewise for the next one, that's the warehouse and logistics Power BI data. So we're going to tag it with the player for logistics. Likewise for IT team and then SharePoint is tagged with exec. So you're basically just differentiating this for each individual. And then you've got the SharePoint news. So that's an intranet news. And what we've said there is actually we're not going to tag this. So of all of these screens that are receiving this channel, they'll get their master data, but they'll also get the SharePoint news because that's actually important to everybody. And that's just lifting another automation of data that's already housed within the company to make it easier and again, less work, less effort. Let's reutilize the assets and the content and the communication we've already built inside. And just to visualize that, here's a little example. We've got a range of different devices there, all with their tags to their player, tagged with sales, tagged with IT team, tagged with logistics. So the players will know who they are and they'll only display the content that's relevant to them. So now hopefully you're getting really close to understanding the entire workflow. If there are further conversations that you wanna have at a later date, 
do reach out to me uh, on LinkedIn and we can bring you on the show, talk about how you build this out. I'm looking at finding a couple of our customers who can come and sit down and kind of work through this workflow with us as well. If you haven't already, do please subscribe to the Signage Live newsletter, Digital Signage Explored. Go check us out, signagelive.com, obviously. And if you want this kind of guidance when it comes to building out, we do have resources available within our commercial team, within our technical pre-sales team that can help you go through this process as well. So do let us know if you need any assistance. One more thing, one more thing I did want to mention. So now we've kind of come to the crux of it. We've got all of our content set up. We have automated nearly everything that we can automate, but there is still one thing that we can automate. And that is creating content without having to have an arts degree. There's a company called ScreenFeed or the ScreenFeed Connect that kind of utilizes that ability. So you can either A, pull in those social feeds that we mentioned. So things like Twitter, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, all those social feeds we've mentioned, ScreenFeed has a functionality for that. But on top of that, it has a tool called ScreenFeed Connect. And what that will allow you to do is start to create very impactful data. So let's take this from another level. Your Power BI dashboards and your SharePoint news, you're not going to be manually entering in any numbers on that. That's typically big data lakes of information that's then getting dissected, understood, and then shipped out. Then you've got the other side of that coin, which is just a single image asset. So from the most complex piece of content to the simplest piece of content, then there's a middle ground. And that's where ScreenFeed Connect can come in where you say, actually, I want to be able to give, let's say, our reception team access to be able to update a spreadsheet or update a very easy to manage feed of content and then for that to turn into really beautiful content on the other side without ha them having to ask the marketing department or someone in the arts team for their assistance regularly and that's where screen fee can come in and you can start to build what is really impressive content your arts team department will most likely build the template this example you can see here on the screen is more like a, a company accolades for individuals so we're talking about that staff recognition or new employees or new hires this is exactly that use case which will become really useful so your reception team or in the hr team would be able to go into their screen fee connect account drop in an image file for the new starter add in their name add in their job role and then hit send screen feed will then do the rest of the work turn that into a beautiful piece of artwork and then that gets uploaded so again just another level down how do we re reduce the amount of creation time to create the most impactful content without taking up all of our internal resources and still reutilizing a lot of the information that's existing. And an example there was just Excel, but there's a whole range of different tools that you can connect to, including APIs. So if you had that data stored internally somewhere and you wanted just to add a little bit more of a level onto that in terms of the, the visuals, then you can do that too. So hopefully that has been useful to you. I'm hoping that we can come back to this and grow and expand on it. Just to zoom out here on what we have looked at, this is kind of the process. My intention is to document this out and put this up on signagelive.com where you can come and look at this video, but also download your own guide. So do keep an eye on that. But this just gives you that high level. What do I need to start with from day one if I don't know what to do with my digital signage? And that is pretty much it. I can see that we've got a few people still around. So if there are any questions, I'll hold on just for a couple of minutes here. Other than that, I really do appreciate you coming on the show today and watching. This will be available later on VOD through that newsletter and also through Spotify and through YouTube as well and on signagelive.com, of course. If you do want to uh, talk to me about any particular episodes or something that you want to build out for the future, do reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. I want to try and get as many people involved into this community talking about products, features, functions. How do we solve for X within within many different verticals and industries? And uh, it's starting to build this kind of really good pipeline of industry experts bringing in what they're specialized in. I really appreciate your time today. Have a good evening. Have a good weekend. Uh, if you are in the UK, go enjoy some fireworks later on. And again, we will see you on the next one. And uh, we will be joined by Joe next week. I'm not 100% sure what he's covering, but again, we'll be in touch next Friday, 3 p.m. Thank you.